Okay, now we're going to go over some of the new capabilities in Gambria Lightspeed for rapidly iterating on particle systems using Maya. The goal of the system is to allow you to edit and create particle systems in Maya and see exactly how that's going to look in a Gambria Render window. Now we'll be showing that previewing in a PC window, but you can also have that previewer on a connected console, a 360 or a PS3 or Wii, and also see those changes you make in real time on the con console. You can also use the libraries of the system to compile those into your final game so that you can rapidly iterate and make parameter changes to particle systems in Maya and see those change in your final game in real time as well. Okay, some good news and bad news before we get started. The good news is by watching this video you should get a very good sense of the power of the system and how you would use it to create particle systems. It's very easy to use. The bad news is I'm not an artist. I'm not even a proficient Maya user. I've been using Maya for about three or four hours now, so I apologize in advance to all the Maya users and all the artists out there for all the horrible things you're about to see me do. But hopefully you'll be able to look past that and see the power of the system and think how you would use it to create new and exciting particle systems. Okay, enough about that. Let's get started. Now my goal is to make sort of a, a smoky ring of fire explosion around one of my characters. So let's take that as a goal. Our first step is we're going to open a character for reference. And here we have one of the Warjacks, a Vandal from the Mangled Metal sample game we use. Now we said we wanted to make a ring of fire, so I'm going to start by making a curve uh, here at the base of the character. That's going to be the base of my particle system. And I'll go to the new Gambrio particle shelf and I will create a new particle system from Curve Emitter, which I have selected. Okay. That's done. Now let's launch the previewer. Now I can select the platform. I have a few others installed here. I'm just going to do the PC for the video. And that launches my remote viewer window. Now not only the particle system changes going over, but also anything else I have in this scene. So meshes, materials, animations, all of that will get exported over to the viewer so that I can see my particle system changes in the context of whatever it is I'm editing. Now you'll also see that when I rotate my viewer in Maya, you see that exact change happen in the viewer as well. Okay, now I barely see a particle system, and I think that's a scale problem because this guy is about three and a half meters tall. I'm using centimeters as my units, but my default particle sizes are 0.1. So let's bump those up. 25. Now I see the particles. And you'll see that I can dynamically change the particles in real time and see exactly how that's going to look. Now, personally, I don't, don't do very well seeing the particles just as sprites, so I need to get a material on them fairly quickly. There's a default material that's assigned to our particle system, so let's change the base texture of that material. And we'll specify a file of that, something dusty. So I've got some files set up. I'll specify the image file to use. We'll use dust. Okay, let's refresh our viewer. Ah. There's the, gut, the dust, and we're ready to go. Now, let's make a few other changes to our particle system. Uh, we might increase the lifespan and give that lifespan some variance. Um, let's give the particle size some variance so we can have them showing up at you know, some smaller, some larger. Uh, we'll increase the speed and give that some variance. You know, all these changes are, are really easy to make. Okay, now the first thing I would like to do is instead of having this look like the dusty effect that it is, I'd like to give it some color. So let's go over to the particle system itself and examine color. And I'll change my animation settings so I'm working in a, a smaller window. Okay, let's edit this color to be something more like fire, some kind of orangish yellow. And we'll set a keyframe for this right here at time equals zero. And then at the end, we want it to be smoky. So let's use sort of a black color for that. We'll set a key there. Now I want it to be smoky for a little while longer than it's exploding. So I'm going to set a black color as well right in the middle. But I still want it to be orange for a little while. So let me bump that back up. 
So now it'll be sort of exploding orange, it'll fade to black very quickly, and then it'll be black the rest of the time. Now I quickly see that, that I've got this alpha effect that makes the particles sort of pop out at the end. So I know I want the particles to be at alpha zero at the very end. Let's set a key for that. But now I don't see them at all. I don't want them to start at one, so I'm going to fade them in as well. So I'll set a key at one, and then I'll have them come in fairly quickly at a value of one. We'll set a key. So they fade in fairly quickly, and then they fade out a lot over time. I'm not sure they're fading out quite like I would like. But we can edit the values and set keys, or we can use the graph to change these things. So here's the graph that is affecting our particle system. I don't want it to fade off so linearly. I'd like this to be flatter for a while. So let's add a new key to our chart here. And I can change all of these things in real time. So I could change it dramatically down to there. And you can see the effect in the real time viewer. Or I can have it be flatter for a while. Great. That's maybe a little more like I was thinking. Okay, so we've changed color, we've changed alpha, maybe we'll also change particle size, so I sort of have a, a nice small particle at the beginning. We'll have it, you know, increase to some size fairly quickly. Uh, let's say half as big, somewhere in the beginning. Then at halfway through, we'll have it up to one, and maybe all the way up to two uh, by the time it's done. Yeah, okay. So it's sort of starting with a little explosion, and then it gets a little smoky. But it's still sort of passive. We need to add some forces to this system. So let's go to the Create Force and Attach the Selected Particle System. And we start with a gravity field, but let's boost this up to a radial field. Whoa. Okay, now my particles are going all over the place, um, and also doing it kind of slowly. So I'm going to bump up the magnitude of this force. But let's increase the attenuation and see if that gives me something more like I want. Oh, here they come. They're coming in. Okay. Not too bad. Not too bad. Although, I'm starting to see gaps in my particle system. I think I need to increase the number of particles. So, let's increase the rate to 150. And I need to increase the total number of particles that I can see. So that's number of particles. Let's increase that to 300. Ah, not too bad. I'm starting to get pretty happy with that. Um, let's see some of the other things we can change relative to our particle system. Uh, we could parameterize the rate. I think I'll leave that alone for now. Um, we've got variance on all of our parameters. We could add some rotation. You know, I have no idea what values to use, so let's just sort of uh, throw some things in there and see how it looks. Okay, there's some nice things. We definitely want to rotate that so not everything's rotating the same way. Add some variance. We'll add some some variance to the angle. You know, same in the variance of that. Huh. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, so not too bad. I'm not an artist and I know it's sort of developer art but I was able to quickly make a ring of fire sort of particle system very easily and I was able to see exactly what it would look like in Maya and in my real-time Gambrio window. Now one last change, I don't really want this to be a constantly looping effect so I need to go in and change it to be um, a one-time effect. So let's change this to clamp and I need to change my viewer to be looping and now I change a value see this sort of explosion it fades out actually there's one more change I'd like to make looks like the alpha is not quite what I wanted it fades in a little too quickly so let's change this back to 0.5 here see if that helps so it fades in a little more get my smoke. Not too bad. I'm happy with that. I hope you like this presentation of creating particle systems with Maya using Gambrio Lightspeed.